Well, we'll start off with Ukraine, but I'm not going to really go too into it like I have before. Uh, we'll just move on to some other interesting conspiracies, um, conspiracy articles. Uh, fresh warnings of civil war as Ukraine launches military operations. So, Ukraine launches military operation? I don't think so. I think it's the EU and NATO launching operations against Russia. I mean, that's that's what I'm seeing right here. So they can call it a civil war in quotes, like in Syria, right? But, um, so anyways, I'm going to move on from this, uh, the, the latest developments. Combat vehicles in East Ukraine city fly Russian flags. It's unclear who the masked men are. So, combat vehicle with pro-Russian gunmen on top runs through downtown. On the 16th, the troops on those vehicles wore green camouflage, camouflage uniforms, automatic weapons, grenade launchers, and at least one had the St. George ribbon attached to his uniform, which has become a symbol of the pro-Russian insurgency. So maybe they are pro-Russian. Maybe they're just grassroots, you know? It's probably like every other situation, though, where there's people that want to have their independence, and they'll get aid from someone that will want to try to influence them or control them or manipulate them. So they try to they'll go with that and get support uh, to fend off the other people who are going to manipulate them uh, even more, which would be like NATO, the IMF. Uh, the headline's kind of meaningless, but I'll get down into the actual article. Just mention a few things. U.S.-Russia trade accusations ahead of Ukraine talks. Uh, concerned NATO said it was deploying more forces in Eastern Europe and called for Russia to stop destabilizing the former Soviet Republic. <laughs> it's like they just did that uh, to that country and uh, uh, basically uh, took power. So <laughs> it's kind of like Kerry saying, uh, uh, accusing Russia and Putin and stuff of uh, taking over, you know, oh, letting sovereign nations make their own decisions, right? Um, and then you go down here, and it says that, um, yeah, they call it a civil war. That's what I was getting to. They were dragging the country into the brink of a civil war. So that's why I said in the beginning of this that the Ukrainian people are really the losers in the end because they'll be used uh, and squeezed in between uh, these two different uh, groups of interest. Um, it's kind of like, uh, I don't want to say it's just like it, but uh, what they did in Germany. And then they moved eastward. Uh, they actually say this, uh, you know, this, they're accusing Moscow of trying to build a new Berlin Wall. So, I mean, what, what happens when, when in Moscow there's, uh, uh, the Russians are trying to fend off uh, NATO inside Russia? And they, you know, they do whatever, they put up whatever resistance they have to do, fund militias or or do whatever. And is the West going to accuse them? They're building a Berlin Wall. They're like, this is Russia. What do you want us to do? <laughs> we don't have any, we can't go any more east. Which is probably why we've seen the article or the uh, poll about, you know, giving Alaska back to Russia. Maybe that's what they'll get. Um... America's coup machine destroying democracy since 1953. The U.S. efforts to overthrow foreign governments leave the world less peaceful, less uh, just, and less hopeful. So, yeah, talking about coups, right? That's basically what they had there in Ukraine. Uh, the former security chief of Ukraine reported that coup plotters who overthrew the elected government in Ukraine basically lived in the U.S. embassy. They were there every day. It says, we also know from leaked Russian intercept that they were in close contact with the ambassador uh, and the U.S., senior U.S. official in charge of the coup, former Dick Cheney aide uh, Newland, uh, officially the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs. And it says that we can assume that many of their days in the embassy were spent in strategy and training sessions with their individual CIA case officers. Uh, to place the coup in Ukraine in historical context, it's at least the 80th time the U.S. has organized a coup or a failed coup, and um, 
foreign countries since 1953. Most of them have led to severe repression, disappearances, extrajudicial um, executions, torture, corruption, extreme poverty, inequality, and prolonged setbacks uh, for the democratic aspirations of the people, right? So they think they're getting democracy, and that's what they get. Yeah. You've heard uh, Hillary Clinton talk about soft power. The dangers of soft power, government-backed cultural programs often come across as just propaganda. This picture is pretty funny with uh, the first lady there. Um, we heard uh, another first lady, I'll use that term before, smart power. Remember this, um, in her confirmation hearing, Hillary Clinton used the phrase smart power. They say it's Obama speak for soft power. Way to some background. Soft power is, of course, the phrase Joseph Nye coined to describe foreign policy tools that nations can use to achieve desired outcomes through attraction rather than coercion. Uh, most progressives approve of the concept but hate the name uh, soft power because it sounds weak. It's funny that they say nations, though. Nations of people, ethnicities of people. No, it's business, big business and corporations overthrow governments. Uh, to enslave them financially, whether it's to get them in the debt or give them the factories to make, uh, you know, uh, t-shirts and, and Nike shoes. For the Pentagon, soft power is part of uh, psychological operations or psyops, but for the State Department and USAID, it's part of their information operations. This is what they do to Russia a lot, too, uh, with protests and that, all of which is intended to influence local populations. It says it's not just uh, the U.S. government, but also and the European Union. They're sponsoring initiatives throughout the Middle East and North Africa. They say that uh, many of these art-based projects, often funded by the State Department's Public Diplomacy Fund, are often seen as propaganda, not helpful diplomacy, because they're usually really cheesy. Uh, communities in war zones want tangible improvements, fewer drone strikes. We want fewer drone strikes, damn it. You know, they form unions and stuff. Night raids and airstrikes, uh, more access to uh, uh, basically food, electricity, housing, and all that. It says that no amount of reality television will bring America's adversaries uh, closer to America's perspective. Um, all right. U.S. vet, this guy, this... Um, uh, what the heck was his name? But uh, basically, they had a nickname for him. The terrorist, the American terrorist in Syria. U.S. vet accused of fighting with Al-Qaeda in Syria dies. So, just like we've covered this before, his father was saying that uh, he was, he claimed to be working for the for the CIA. So, uh, but this air crew of Phoenix, Arizona, died of an accidental overdose on April 8th. Michael uh, Osama bin Laden, who was reportedly dead before the even Navy SEALs went over uh, to get him, what was it, in Pakistan or something, and dumped his body at sea and no evidence, or like the Boston bomber where they kill the, the, the supposed um, uh, uh, suspects, right? Uh, but they arrested and charged the guy today for a false bombing hoax. It's just you can't, uh, uh, it's hard to really believe anything. Uh, this guy may have actually been dead. I've seen the, the pictures or the videos of people saying that uh, this guy was killed by the Syrian government. So, but then all of a sudden, uh, right around that time after that, uh, he pops up and uh, and he's going to court and being charged in, uh, in the United States. Not a very harsh uh, sentence, if I remember correctly, but it doesn't matter now because he's dead. And burning another asset, could this be the case? That you had this Overland Park shooting. It says when he heard the name of a suspect in the shooting, Robert Setloff writes that he shuddered because he had met and interviewed Glenn Miller, the supposed KKK shooter, um, 33 years ago. Uh, he says that he was rapidly violent, racist, and anti Semite when I met him 33 years ago, and apparently it has never changed. He always had a gun. Sadly, this time he used it. Uh, this Glenn Miller, uh, the former North Car Carolina Ku Klux Klan leader, arrested in Kansas City's Jewish Community Center shootings, uh, where 30 people were killed on Sunday, has been identified previously as an FBI informant. 
He's known to have infiltrated the Klan time and time again since the civil rights days. Uh, he testified for the government in a major trial where the feds sought to convict leaders of the far right. In his book, A White Man Speaks Out, he claims to have been an FBI informant. A similar note came across this article. Government is going to keep the death ray machine secret via court order. There's a criminal case in New York. Uh, basically, this guy, Glendon Scott Crawford, is the inventor of a purported mobile x-ray weapon intended to harm religious minorities. Uh, the trial goes on on April 29th. Um, it says here, it's earned a great deal of notoriety as tech experts argue over whether such a device could be constructed. Now that's pretty much effing laughable because it's already been out in the open that the military has this and have actually tested it on Afghanis. I remember showing a video where this guy was hiding behind a mattress or something like that. He was like a news reporter and he was being pulsed and they were demonstrating how this could be used against protesters and stuff like that. And he was getting hot and he was like, oh man, I'm getting burnt here. The device which was developed over a decade ago has part of a once classified military project. Once classified causes searing pain but no actual physical damage to its human targets. The military version is called the Active Denial System. They're referring to something else, the Silent Guardian by Raytheon for police, for crowd control. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dorian, a U.S. military spokesman, says the kit is now in Afghanistan, but no decisions have yet been made on its use. And of course, uh, supposedly, they brought it back. Um, you know, and the first thing I thought was that it was killing too many people or something. Um, but the, he, he's trying to promote it because he's saying that it could uh, it could limit the amount of deaths because you know, they care about keeping civilian casualties in Afghanistan to a minimum. Anyways, it says the U.S. Attorney's Office has asked the U.S. District Court to issue an order which would allow uh, the sharing of details of the weapon, which has been referred to as a death ray or pain ray, only between the parties and which would otherwise keep these details secret. Uh, this guy was using this weapon, supposedly in his garage, a garage built weapon, right? It's already been deployed to the military, uh, to the military in Afghanistan, to groups such as the KKK in order to target Muslims. So they give him to the KKK. Eventually, both the Jewish and Klan organization reported him to federal authorities. This guy was able to draw up a schematics, assemble parts to create the system, and it was at former General Electric Company Industrial Mechanics. So maybe he. It makes you wonder when people create this stuff, they actually do create it in the garage or whatever, um, that the technology is stolen and then they're discredited, you know, what better than say that you're joining the KKK to kill Jews. Um, the other thing is, is people like on Facebook, you know, the, or Google or something like that, they attach these, these faces to these people who didn't actually develop it in the basement or in their college dorm room, but it was handed to them and they just go along with it and they get rich. Whereas the guys that actually create things end up poor or arrested or killed. On that note, the LRAD, uh, this is that uh, long-range acoustic device. Missouri Department of Transportation is using this sound cannon against speeding drivers. They'll target vehicles at speed in work zones. So they got a little news clip, so go in there and check it out. So the paint, you know, the drones are supposed to be used for surveillance, then they're killing people. Um, the uh, pain ray gun, oh, which is for protesters, and then eventually it'll start killing people. This the sound cannon, oh, which is going to be used for crowd control, protesters, and then all of a sudden, you know, now they're uh, hitting up uh, speeders. Speaking of peaceful protesting and this whole Bundy Ranch thing, in a shootout with feds, we would put women at the front as an ex sheriff. So it explains the strategy uh, in the Nevada cattle showdown. Uh, we were actually strategizing to put all the women up front uh, near the feds. He's probably just making a point here, but they probably weren't going to really do that. Who knows? If they are going to start shooting, it's going to be women that are going to be televised all across the world getting shot by these rogue federal officers. And they basically go on to say that this whole thing isn't over yet. There's still many people there. The U.S. Postal Service joins federal ammo purchases. They posted on their website, assorted small arms ammunition. And you never know when you're going to need a minesweeper. Uh, it says here that the government donated this mine-resistant vehicle to the Michigan City Police Department. An investigative journalist, Michael Rupert, has reportedly committed suicide.
He said, I'm tired, I'm ready to die. Emma said, you can tell whenever he spoke, his heart was burdened for what he saw coming. 